All right. As promised, um, I'm going to do a video lecture over the uh, valence electron Lewis dot diagram notes. Um, so I'm not going to probably get as detailed as I did for the in-class lecture. Um, I'm going to go through it. I'll, I'll try to keep it similar and use some of the examples um, that I used in class. Um, but it's probably not going to be uh, exactly the same. So, <clears throat> okay. Um, so valence electrons are electrons in the outermost or highest energy level of an atom. Uh, now, why do we care about these in chemistry? Well, we care about them because the valence are the, are the electrons that are used in determining how an atom will bond or react. And in chemistry, we are, uh, reactions are actually one of the main things that we're concerned about in terms of like discovering, like that's one of the main overall concepts of, of what you study in chemistry is, is how atoms interact and react, being able to understand um, what, like predict what products are gonna be made if you put two things together, what will happen, that kind of stuff. So because of that, um, the, the subatomic particles that help determine the reactions of atoms become very important. So the electrons and specifically the valence electrons become really important to understand and know um, where they are, how they work, that kind of stuff. So uh, the number of valence electrons an atom contains is equal to the family or column number it is for the A columns only. So if you take the periodic table I gave you, you'll notice that I have them labeled 1A, 2A, 3B, 4B, that kind of stuff. The A's are up here. For the A columns, the number of the column is the number of valence electrons those elements have. So for example, I've got here chlorine. Chlorine is here in 7A. That means it has seven valence electrons. Barium, barium is here in uh, 2A. That means it has two valence electrons, okay? There is one exception. Helium, right? Helium is here in 8A, but it only has two valence electrons. This is because the first, um, the first energy level is full at two at two electrons. Helium, you can see it's got a proton number of two, which means it normally has two electrons as well. It only has two electrons. So why is it in 8a instead of 2a well the families are arranged by similarities in how they act so even though helium only has two electrons it has a full outer level just like all the other ones in that in that family only they're full at eight instead of two okay so you have to memorize that helium is the exception for the valence electron rule all right moving on lewis dot diagrams Lewis dot diagrams are visual depictions of an atom and its valence electrons. So we had chlorine. Um, we already said 7A, so it has seven valence electrons, so it would look kind of like that. Okay. No more than two dots, the dots are represent electrons per side. So when I say per side, I'm looking at like, like this is just like a like SY is a stands for symbol. If you look at it, it's got like four sides, like top, bottom, left, right. No more than two electrons per side. And you can generically try to keep the electrons balanced around the symbol kind of like this. Okay, now, uh, we've got an example here. Oxygen, oxygen is 6A, means it has six valence electrons, okay? Um, you can write oxygen like, uh, like it is here um, with, two and two and one and one. You could also write it like, uh, hold on, move this up a little, <coughs> excuse me. You could write it like this. Okay. Oh. Sorry, sat on my tile. Okay, let's try this again. So you can write oxygen like this, you could also do it like this. 
and have like that. Uh, you could do it like this. Okay. Um, you could even do it like this, and I would still be okay with it. Uh, some some teachers get very picky about the order that you put the dots in and stuff like that. For what we're doing, I'm not really super concerned about the two things that I get that I'm going to be picky about are no more than two electrons per uh, side, and you have to have the right number of valence electrons for that atom, obviously. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. I'm going to wait on the octet rule idea. I'm going to first go to the this Lewis dot diagram worksheet. Okay, this is uh, I, it's not an assignment. You don't have to do it, as I mentioned before. Um, it's it's just kind of for some in class practice on this to to learn how to do it. So, um, let's see here, calcium. So calcium on here. Ca is in 2a, which means it has two valence electrons. So calcium will look like this. Now, a few things about the symbols that we're pulling off of here. Okay, the first thing is uh, you every when you write a symbol, when you write a symbol down, it must be. The first letter must be capitalized. If there is a second letter, it must be lowercase. And you must make sure that it's clear. Okay, the reason is, is because this is, this is cobalt, whereas this is carbon monoxide. two totally different things. Okay, so you need to be careful when you're writing it down. You have to and um, you have to make sure that it's clear. The things that people mess up on those the most are ones like where the, the second letter is uh, like an O or an S um, or even an M, something that can be like the, the lowercase looks exactly like the uppercase, it's just the size wise. Okay, so you've got to make sure that you're writing the symbol correctly. All right, secondly, in terms of writing the symbol correctly, if you look um, at the periodic table I gave you, okay, the capital I's have like the little line above and below, sort of. And we and you should know if they're, the first letter is always capital on here, right? So um, we have capital I. Now, lowercase, like this, this is a lowercase l. A lowercase i will be like silicon will have a dot on it. So some people, a lot of times I'll get people that will look at th like thallium and think it's uh, ti. It's not ti looks like this, like titanium. They're two different things. Okay. And then the last thing I noticed some people doing on the test, um, not a ton, but enough that it made an impression on me is, um, I don't know if it's the font on this, uh, on the periodic table I gave you or what, but I had some people like for, for a lowercase c, they were writing it as like an e, they were thinking it was an e. So like they're supposed to be writing sc and they'd write se or um, I don't know, there's, I think there's a couple others that are like that too. But I noticed like people, there was supposed to be a c and people were writing e. This is what the e looks like um, on here, like this. Okay, and this is SC. I don't know if it's because it's got that little like nub at the end or what, but that people are mistaking it for an E. Okay, all right. So back to this. Okay, so we've got calcium too. Uh, let's do a couple more. Let's take a look at potassium. Potassium, okay. It's in 1A, so it'd be, okay, it's 1. Um, argon, argon all the way over here and 8A, so it has 8. So 
argons, Lewis dot diagram would look like that. All right, I'm going to skip over to helium, number seven, because helium, helium is an 8A, right? But remember, helium is our exception for the Lewis dot diagram. Even though it's an 8A, it only has two. So that's what helium should look like. Okay. All right. Moving on. I'm going to go to the actual homework. So the chemical bonds, ionic bonds worksheet. Okay, we're just going to practice a couple of these as well. So we have calcium. We've, we've already done that one, right? So calcium, element symbol is CA. The group number, that's from the periodic table, that just means the family column. So it's 2A. Okay, number of valence electrons. 2A, so it's got two, and then the Lewis dot structure we already did looks like this. Okay, so that's all you're doing for this side. Okay, all right. Now, the last uh, rule on, or the last thing on this, um, on these notes is the octet rule. The octet rule says atoms tend to gain, lose, or share electrons in order to acquire a full set of valence electrons, which would make it stable. And this is usually at eight. Okay, so um, I'm not going to go through all the analogies that I used in, in class, um, but just this idea that, that atoms are trying to, they try in general to be as stable as possible. Okay, and the way that they become stable is to get a full outer level of electrons, which are the valence electrons. Okay. Now, how do they do this? Well, um, if we have, actually, let me go to my... Okay, um, so all right, octet rule and ion. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna head this little extra notes part here. Just an explanation of this. So if we look at the first one on the on the other side of the homework is is Na, sodium. So if we look at sodium, it tells us that it's in uh, it's in one. It's got one valence electron, right? So sodium, if we look at our periodic table, is got has got eleven electrons when it starts out. So if I draw that, so Na. And it's got two and then eight and then one. So it starts off with a total of, oh, sorry, got way zoomed in there. Okay. So the electrons in sodium would start off with, they're like this. Now, it needs to have a full outer level. Okay, sodium is full at eight. So there's a couple of ways that that can happen. The first way would be to gain seven electrons. Okay, we've got one in the outer level. If we're full at eight, we'd gain seven. So it looks something like this. So we have two eight, and then another set of eight. So it's got a full outer level. 
right? Okay. The second way would be, probably guessing it by now, to lose one. Okay, if it loses that, so think of like an onion, you peel out the uh, you peel off the outer layer. If you take away that electron, you're totally gone, and now your outer layer has eight. And the valence electrons are whatever the outer layer is. So like, so if you're looking here, like you got one valence electron outer level, right? Well, if you take away that level, then the outer level becomes this one underneath. So now these are the valence electrons. So that would look something like this, which would also be full and stable because it has eight electrons in the outer level, right? Okay, now we ask ourselves, which, uh, which of these routes to being stable is the atom most likely going to take? Okay, and this is where you can think of it like... Um, uh, sort of like math rounding, uh, I use the I use the analogy in class of uh, little kids, um, like a toddler, and you've got a plate of cookies on a coffee table by um, like a couch, and then a plate of cookies all the way up on top of a, refri of a refrigerator. Which one is the toddler going to go after? Well, they're going to go after the one on the couch because it's easier, right? It's easier to get to whatever. Um, they don't have to scale uh, Mount Refrigerator and base jump off after they eat. So... They're going to go for the ones on the couch because it's easier to get to. Atoms, in order to be stable and get what they want, um, be stable, they're going to do whatever's easiest. Now, usually for an atom, that means in terms of like um, finding other things to react with and the amount of energy is needed to do that and that kind of stuff. Uh, so for the electrons, though, you can think of it in terms, almost in terms of math rounding. You're trying to get to eight, either by adding or taking away to reveal a full layer underneath. So if I do like a little timeline here, so if the valence electrons are one, Okay, the number of valence electrons. If your valence electrons, if you have one, two, or three valence electrons, it's gonna be easier to lose than it is, it's gonna be easier to lose those than it's gonna be to gain, like if you have one, you'd have to gain seven. If you had two, you'd have to gain six. Well, it's going to be easier to find something to take just one than it is going to be find seven extra electrons from other things. So generically, if, you're, if you've got one, two, or three, you're going to lose electrons. Okay. Four is kind of a special case. Um, you don't, uh, we're not going to, we're not going to worry about that right now. Um, Five, six, or seven for five, six, or seven, it's closer. It's going to be so seven would gain one to get to eight, six would gain two, five would gain three. That's going to be easier than five losing five, six losing six, and seven losing seven. So these are going to gain electrons. Okay. Let's see if there we go. Let's get it in the lighting so we can see it more easily here. Okay. If and if you have eight, you're already stable, so you don't want to gain or lose. Okay, so up here, sodium is gonna to want to do this. That's the easier route to becoming stable for sodium. Okay. 
All right, now let's take this idea and apply it to our homework, the second page of the homework. Okay. All right. So on the back, this is the same homework as it's the chemical bonds, ionic bonds one, just the back of it. So here, uh, the Lewis dot, the, the only reason it's not written in there is because I don't think you could type in a Lewis dot diagram. So, so the Lewis dot for sodium, it's got one valence electron, so it looks like this. We already said it's going to want to lose one because it's got one, right? Okay, now, this is the part that gets a little tricky. You've got to pay, you've got to pay attention. Okay. Electrons and protons in a normal atom are equal, meaning the regular atom has no charge. The, it becomes an ion when it gains or loses electrons. Okay? Electrons are negatively charged. So if it it's going to be kind of almost opposite of what you would probably think. If you lose an electron, you're going to have a positive charge because you're, you're taking away negatives. So if you lose electrons, you're going to have a positive charge. If you gain electrons, you're gaining negatives, so you're going to have a negative charge. All right, let's do a couple of these together just to make sure we've got it figured out. So BE, so we look at our periodic table. BE is right here, so it's 2A. So that means it's got two valence electrons, which means the Lewis dot would look something like that. Okay. Now, is it going to want to gain or lose? Well, two valence electrons is going to be easier to lose, right? So we're going to put L2. It's going to lose two to get to a full layer underneath, which means the valence charge, if it loses, it's going to be positive. So it's going to be plus two. That's all there is to it. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do chlorine. So chlorine, Cl. Right. Chlorine is 7A. So it's got seven valence electrons. So it'll look something like this. Okay. It's going to want to gain or lose. Does it want to lose seven or gain? one okay well it's gonna be much easier for it to gain one right okay so we're gonna put g one if it gains the charge is going to be negative so negative however many so it's negative one okay all right uh do one more on here just to make sure we know what we're doing here so let's take a look at neon uh ne Neon, you'll find over here in 8A. So neon has eight valence electrons. It's going to look something like this. Okay. Now, does it want to gain or lose electrons? Well, it needs to get to eight, correct? Well, it's already at eight, so it doesn't want to do either. So you can just put a zero. What is its valence charge? Well, if it doesn't gain or lose electrons, it's going to be a zero as well. Okay. Now, one last thing on this. As you go through this, you'll notice like here, 1A sodium, right? Well, look at all these other ones here. They're, these are all in 1A, correct? So they will all have one valence electron. They're all going to want to lose that electron. So they're all going to be a plus one charge. So you can actually mark on your periodic table. As you start filling this out, you can mark on your periodic table the charges of the columns as you learn them. Because all of the, the elements in that column will have the same valence electrons, which means they should do the same charge for the most part. Okay. All right. So that's it for this, uh, for that note section. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, good luck and I hope it goes well.